Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Amoda podcast. Um, today, I'm going to be talking with Amoda about the relationship of the body to spiritual awakening. Amoda, in your book, uh, Embodied Enlightenment, um, you wrote extensively, and I seem to remember you included a whole chapter on this very subject, on the relationship of spiritual awakening um, to the body in all sorts of different ways. And I know it was a very beautiful uh, chapter. So we're going to take some of that, although not refer to that directly, but but actually open that up a bit because it is a conversation that people want to have now, you know, about what happens to the body. Is it neglected? Is it ignored? Does it exist? Et cetera, et cetera. So um, before we jump in, uh, let me read a couple of notes that I've got and then and then we can explore. On the journey of self-realization, when layers of identity have fallen away and the deepest knowing of being as essential nature is revealed, there is often an idea or belief that the body is an illusion and therefore irrelevant. This can lead to non-dual fundamentalism and ignoring of the body's welfare. A certain type of bypassing might take place. How can we reconcile the deepest realization of true nature, the formlessness of being, with the unavoidable fact that we experience ourselves as form, the body, sensations, perceptions, etc.? Does awakening self-realization have a direct impact on the body? Does the well-being of the body have an impact on our spiritual journey of awakening? So there's a lot to uh, a lot to unpack, a lot to explore. So let me go back, Amoda, to to the 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 first thing that I said on the journey of self-realization, when layers of identity have fallen away, and there's the deepest knowing of being as the essential nature. There is often this idea or belief that the body is an, an illusion and therefore irrelevant. And I know we've dealt with this quite a lot in our meetings. So let's open this up. Is the body relevant? Is it? Does it exist? You know, to pay attention to it, what to do? The... Falling away of layers of identity inevitably bring us to a falling away of the identity of me as this finite self. This finite self includes mind, body, and uh, feelings. Yeah, body is feelings, but the whole body mind. Uh, vehicle or matrix, if you like, we are not limited to that. So the falling away of that identity is a doorway, an opening to what we might call a unity experience, the realization that I am one with everything. That doesn't mean this form is attached to another form, but that my essential nature as beingness is the same as the essential beingness in everything. In other words, everything is Buddha. Everything is Buddha nature. There is not a single thing that we can name or experience that doesn't arise from the same ground of being. That's a profound, a profound realization, uh, perhaps not encapsulated in that particular language, but as a visceral experience that frees us from the obsession with me and the bound, you know, the boundary of me. I begin here and stop here, and everything else is outside of me, and I have to either defend myself against that or. Uh, try and belong to that for whatever the psychological reasons of comfort and and so on are, which then creates layers of identity. So so freedom is an undoing of those layers. 
self-realization is an undoing of those layers. But <laughs> when it remains as I am not this body, then we are indeed veering towards <laughs> non-dual fundamentalism, non-dual extremism, which ends up or has the byproduct of bypassing. If I am not this body, then this body is an illusion. It's not real. The only thing that's real is consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that leads to a neglect of what we might call the well-being or the welfare of the body because it's not the complete realization we need to that that realization that reveals itself of the ground of being as fundamental nature has to then penetrate a little bit deeper in other words it 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 has to penetrate form itself which is the realization that form is an expression or a manifestation or an appearance from or within that ground of being. So they're not separate. They're not separate. There is, it's not that I am consciousness and therefore all forms are illusions. Form is the same as formless. Yeah, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. So then the, the, the question starts to turn towards, or the inquiry starts to turn towards, do I need to attend to the body? If it's an appearance within the ground of being, if it's the same, yeah, it's simply the same essence just like the ray of a sun is the same essence as, as the sun, yeah? But it appears as a separate ray of light. So the body appears as a separate or individuated form, but it's the same ground of being. It's the same light that, if you like, creates that form. So then so then what <laughs> yes yeah. exactly yeah yeah so then so then and you know following that it begs the question if as you have just kind of unpacked it it's actually the same then it doesn't really matter then it's a question of personal and, and choice wherever that choice might come from it is a question of choice one one realized individuation might say you know, i'm gonna take care of the body in whatever way i do and they've got the full realization of their impermanence knowing it doesn't matter and then the person next to them who's had the same realization could say let the let the bugs eat me I am. Um, it's the same. Yes, it is. Ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> just destroyed our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> ultimately, well, let's say this. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because everything is impermanent. Everything is going to decay oh and die. Nothing matters. <laughs> <laughs> on that level, on the absolute level, it doesn't matter. And so that frees us from the obsession mm, mm. with yes, yes. the body in the sense of 
uh, the body has to be perfect, either in perfect health or in perfect strength or in perfect appearance or in perfect whatever it is, in order for me as the psychological entity yeah. to feel good about myself. That comes undone which means that the light of beingness can shine through that form, whether that form is disabled, uh, diseased, um, deformed, <laughs> uh, aging, dying, the light of beingness shines through because I am not identified with the form. Yet there's a great freedom and there's a great beauty and there's a great grace in that. However, and it is very much an individual situation, if you like. However, if that it doesn't matter becomes another, let's go back to what we just said, non-dual extremist view, which is a blanket uh, understanding or a blank, blanket uh, belief for everybody and also becomes another identity. Then we have another set of problems, which is bypassing. Yeah. And then the body may, uh, because we feel we're creatures that feel, yeah, we are organisms, functioning physiological organisms. And to deny that is insanity. The body is still here, whether you're awake or not. <laughs> whether you've self-realized or not, the body continues to function until it doesn't. <laughs> but whilst it's alive, it continues to function. It's like the, the vehicle or the aperture through which we experience life, lifeness, the intimacy with what is. And if that becomes of an identity which ends up as a denial of that, then we have created another level of separation, which means that I may experience pain or I may experience illness or aging, and I've covered it up with my idea that I'm not the body, but actually there's a level of suffering in that. Yes, can, can I? Uh, and, and also, the, there are two issues that are that are, that that uh, strike me from what you're saying. One is the, the actually many the the fear factor, yeah, that the body roots us, our relationship with the body, our understanding, our our our, our intrinsic belief that I am the body roots us in fear. Yeah, and that in itself has an attached attachment to it. It's like we're attached. Like there's nothing I can do about the body. I'm attached to it, and I'm scared of my mortality. I'm rooted in fear, and that's it. And so in a way, the realization that you're talking about is the end of fear. And so the end of fear gives us that choice. I don't like to use that word necessarily either, but let's just use it for this for this for these purposes. It gives me a choice of how I am with the body. And 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 is that true? Yes, I think we 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 do. If 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 we do not get stuck in the belief that I'm not the body and therefore I'm not going to I'm just going to ignore it. If we don't get stuck in that then a whole different relationship to yes. the body, to the form. When we realize that we are form and we are formless, and whilst we're alive, the, the realization of formlessness, of our essential nature as beingness, is experienced and filtered through the lived experience. Yeah, and we can't deny that. <laughs> yeah if we if we truly accept that and see that so that the light of beingness can emanate through that form then a whole different set of let's say choices are available to us one is that there are many angles to approach this one is that one of the qualities of the deepest self-realization 
is love. Yeah, love with the qualities of kindness and tenderness. Love is the, if you like, the, the movement. Yeah. So that love would include, <laughs> yeah, not, a, not an attached love or a conditional yeah. love, but simply, simply the taking care of. If this form is just as much God as consciousness or beingness is God, then why would I ignore, as the one who has capacity of self-reflection and, let's say, conscience or choice, yeah, I'm not talking on the absolute level, but on the level of form, why would I harm or deny or, you know, turn away from taking care of this form just like we would, uh, you know, watering the garden? yeah we or wouldn't dog, trample yeah, yeah trample all over the or the, the the roses we'd probably be drawn to taking care of the roses knowing that they are impermanent and their true essence is not the shape and the color and the yeah because that's impermanent their true essence is godness but we take care of that through the form because it's the form that's appearing or the light within that is appearing through the form. So the light in us would take care of that. And the body is the same. So, so there is a kindness or respect. So we could go on about that, but that's, that's mm -hmm. one approach. Maybe we can bring them all together somehow. The other mm -hmm. approach, if you like, that comes up is that and it's sort of related to that is that, and, and and here I speak from from my experience and my proclivities, my tendencies in in this life, is that when the body functions well, when it's not, let's say, an obstacle, an impediment, a burden although it might be, but it, let's say it's not. Then that which flows through this vehicle, this individuation that wants to express itself as long as this finite form exists, flows through much easier, <laughs> flows through without impediment. Let's put it in practical terms. <laughs> Personally, and I would relate this to other individuals, I can offer more, I can give more, I can get yeah, in the world if this body is not an impediment to that. In other words, if this body is not one that is constantly tired or heavy or weighed down with emotion, suppressed emotion, or weighed down with inflammation or heavy food or toxicity, then that which wants to express itself can do so without its energy being siphoned off into, into that, into fatigue or into whatever it might be. So the vehicle actually becomes what I call more transparent it becomes lighter, a lighter load. Now, this doesn't address mm -hmm. when there is illness, which we can't always control. So it's not about being in perfect health, although we can be in harmony. <laughs> yeah. So then there's the whole issue of illness or accident or aging and all of that. But there is something to be said for taking care of the vehicle just as you would take a car to be serviced and cleaned and so on because i've come to see that even though there's no bypassing of the body the body essentially as a functioning organism is an organic machine And in that, it's impermanent. 
But that organic machine, whilst it's functioning, can function in a harmonious and integrated um, relationship to the light of consciousness. So in, in a paradoxical way, it actually frees me up from the body. Taking care of the body in a holistic way frees me up from the body. But it's not a denial of the body. Um, my observation of you over the years is that... Uh, you're, you're, you've you've always been slightly different from most people, and I include myself in that because you know my history of having to go from the toxicity, the inflammation, the heaviness, and the illness of the body, you know, and actually go through that cathartic purification process over a, a long period of time that has led me into a, a place of actually uh, concurring really with with what you're saying. But going back, you, you, I, I'm not sure, uh, certainly in the 20 or 25 years since I've known you, that you you actually have ever had um, a particularly toxic relationship with your body. I don't think you've ever thought of it or believed it to be a thing. For some reason, I think, even though you've experienced trauma, etc., in your life, it's never been inflicted on your body and you've never you know the, the reason that i'm getting to this is is a to say you're kind of remarkable a bit like that you've always been holistic that I, I don't mean that in a basic way i mean you've 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 got a natural harmony between spirit mind emotion and the physicality of the energy body because that's what i want to talk about is the is the energy body is that let's not talk about foods but let's just talk about the toxicity or the rigidity or the armoring that goes on in the physical body due to complications of trauma and the wounding in previous life now you, you do you see where i'm getting to it's like it sort of objectifies my body is a thing it feels terrible i've got this in it you know it's the, it's the holder of all this this tension <laughs> yeah you're right i i i i have never had really much of a separation between mind, body, and spirit. No, they're exactly. all one. They're all one expression of the same. Um, they're not independent of each other. Well, how did you? Was has that? Has that? Nobody taught you that. That's just no. An, I was an innate. <laughs> That's innate. I think yeah. I was born that way. That's extraordinary. It, there's actually a very fine thread if you like, holding all those levels of um, energy bodies. Yes, they are energy bodies. There's the mental energy body. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, emo emotional energy body. There's the physical energy body. And I'm sure there's many more subtle layers in between <laughs> that. Um, there's actually a very fine thread connecting all those together to me. I, I hadn't... Uh, they're not particularly separate. So if I'm, if I've worked on an emotion that might be suppressed, and for many years, mm -hmm. rage was suppressed, rage against my parents, and you know, so on, um, then that would have a direct impact on the body. If I loosened up my body and did some body work, that would have a direct impact on my emotions. And all of that would be very fluid. There's no rigidity in that. They'd be, they're not separate. So, so when <laughs> the, 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 the deeper realization of, of awakening out of the, the dream of the finite self uh, came about it's like it the, the the light of that the 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 freedom of that the lightness of being then penetrated all those levels so nothing's ever separate that's why i say that well i'm not really concerned with the body now i, I am in the sense that there's a <laughs> there's a holistic and wholesome life 
pattern, life routine. Yeah, uh, uh, we can talk about food, we can talk about exercise and movement and so on, but it's not uh, something I have to do in order to to feel good or to to heal something or to uh, fix something. It's just so natural now and, and and fluid. So I'm not really concerned with any of those uh, energetic levels. It's all one. See, it's quite, and that's why uh, it gets difficult to speak of it because I know for many people it's not that. Yes, that's right. Well, that's where I come in. <laughs> that's <laughs> so, where my so because we we do have to address you know for for individuals that are not quite as if you like strange as me. <laughs> um, we do have to address the welfare of the different energy levels because it is a holistic system. Yes, it is. Uh, that's that's exactly why this is 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 so very useful to bring into to humanize if you like uh our enlightenment to humanize it so that so that it's not a neglected part of the conversation neither is it an overly indulged aspect of the conversation so that's the humanization of it and different people have very different experiences of it and Unfortunately, most people have become so dense in their in their form and in their emotions and in the mind that uh, some of what you're talking about, the lightness with which you you talk about, actually in many ways goes over over, over over people's heads. I don't mean intellectually. I just mean it's like, well, what, where does that sit for me? You know, I've had twenty years of of hell in the body, and it's sick, and it's. And I recognize that. that. Yeah, sure. That's... And that's exactly what I think I referred to earlier, or, or at least touched on, is that when the body, and when I say body, I mean emotion and thought, they're all connected. When that is a burden, a burden because it's carrying yeah. trauma, it's carrying <clears throat> tension, it's carrying inflammation, and that hasn't been addressed, then that becomes an impediment to the flow or the filtering of awakened consciousness when there's been a glimpse of it or whatever to fully penetrate mm -hmm. yes yeah? and that's where the relevance of taking care of the body and addressing some of this is is important because as if as the vehicle becomes lighter Yes. then the light of consciousness can move in it more easily and abide as that. So there can be an understanding of what uh, essential nature is, but it remains as an intellectual understanding for it to yeah. penetrate. So, so yes, because they're all connected. It's all one system. Well, yes. There, so this is that third question, which we're going to, you know, cutting to directly, does the well-being of the body have an impact on our spiritual journey of awakening? And that's where um, my my own testimony du during our Ayurvedic Panchakamas, for instance, when I was laden with all of that toxicity from the drugs and, uh, you know, in a life of, of crazy emotional dysfunction. And when I was, you know, I had my first panchakarma, that deep detox cleansing, and it happened when we were water fasting as well. You, you went straight to God. You went straight to bliss, I have to say. Meanwhile, I was over on the other side of the floor in, ra in, 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 in agony, in sheer existential, emotional and physical agony. But the point that I'm going to make is that at certain times during that process, and if you remember that first panchakarma that I had when I was hugely, I thought I was going to die during those six weeks. And then one day I woke up and I was... I was absolutely clear. I had a clarity of mind. I had a connection to what I perceived as spirit, which I didn't know what it was then. Emotionally, I felt suddenly like a stable human being for the first time ever in my life. And my body felt actually quite good. And I went to that Ayurvedic doctor and he said, ah, yes, today you're in, you're in balance. Today, everything is in balance. Mind, body, spirit, emotion is in balance. The next day, of course, I lost it completely. But, it's, but it spoke to me. It said something to me that the body is important. The body does matter. 
it said to me. And there's a deeper level of harmonic vibration that I could have access to if actually I pay attention to the body. Love the body. Respect the body. Do what you can. Not with attachment. Not with fear. Not with all of that kind of stuff that's created the problem in the first place but actually with a grace and with a, a delicacy and with ultimately that's what you said with love. That's right. Yes. All of that. Um, two, two things perhaps occur whilst you were uh, speaking of that and let's see if I can remember them. <laughs> One was that. I think one of the primary insights I had somewhere in my life, and this is long before awakening, um, but somewhere on my path quite early on, was that everything is energy and everything is a reflection of everything else. And so on that level, what I ingest what I take uh, in is has a direct impact. In other words, <laughs> what you eat is what you are. <laughs> and eating not just on the physical level then, on every level. Everything, on every level. But if we, uh, and I don't really want to get into food too much, but if we just <clears> touch <throat> on it, and I want to remember the other point as well, but I realized that if I was eating heavy food, when I say heavy, it, 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 how to describe, vibrationally heavy. And this is not a, a, a moral thing or a you know, spiritual ideology thing, but just sensing energy, something that was heavy, heavily processed, heavily cooked, heavily uh, laden, heavily flavored, whatever it might be, something heavy about it then that's what I become. That's what I become emotionally, physically, energetically. If it has a lightness to it, a light vibration, if it has the light of life in it, it has life force in it, it has, um, yeah, and this all has, if we can go back to how it's handled, whether it's love that 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 grew it, whether it's love that made a meal out of it yeah cooked it created it mm -hmm. all of that yeah mm -hmm. I don't know why or how but I could sense it I could sense it in my it, yeah both in in my own uh, let's say cooking <laughs> and in other people's cooking and in what was what I picked up from the store or the restaurant I, I could just sense it and so my whole uh let's say navigation system was naturally towards the light, the light and the life force and the aliveness. Now that can change everything. So then the choice isn't whether, you know, this is good for me or this is bad for me or whether it's the right number of calories or whether it's, uh, you know, this diet or that diet. It's just a much more organic uh, relationship to, uh, to what is being assimilated as this Okay, yeah. so let's. I want to come back to that, but let's get your second point for. Well, perhaps the second point is related, and that was let's also be clear <clears throat> that what you do with the body, the protocols, the cleansing, the uh, whatever one's eating, uh, the Ayurveda, the this, the that, doesn't lead to enlightenment. It's not the <clears throat> cause of enlightenment because that's also an error that has been seen, especially in, well, fasting can 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 go to that extreme. Well, it does get you quite far. It, <laughs> well, it, it does, yeah. Quite high. But I've seen a lot of people who do oh, fast man. or who do, uh, who are even breatharians who are actually quite rigid. <laughs> yeah. So we have to be a little bit careful not to get caught up in protocols of this, that, or the other. Um, because it'll bring me to a higher consciousness. It may bring you to a higher consciousness, but a higher consciousness can also be a bypassing, a transcendence. Yeah. So we have to be a little bit careful of that. And that's not what I'm talking about. 
nor okay. are you. The cleansing, okay. the lightening, the relationship with how we eat, how we assimilate is not on the level of, and it's going to get me to enlightenment. Okay. It's almost a preparation <laughs> for that light to come in. I know where to go with this. Uh, so so let's just be clear about one thing. You know, enlightenment or awakening has no cause, right? But the mind that searches for the cause is searching for a red herring, a red herring because it's trapped on the linear level. It's causeless. It's causeless. But what we're talking about here is attending to the divine temple that's, that becomes the more empty it becomes empty of the baggage of foodstuffs and toxic stuff that we just rampage through most of our lives, those, those of us who aren't a moda. And uh, you know, and the 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 the, the enormous di you know, digesting without eliminating of emotional toxicity, of how burdened we are intellectually with our beliefs. Now we carry all of that around, and there's no room for the divine. There's no room for that divine light that we're talking about. It's not esoteric. It's just a simple fact of the humanizing factor of, of being incarnated as these magical existential beings that we are. And so what this is about is you, you, you cannot cause enlightenment, but you can cleanse the body so it becomes lighter and lighter. Jesus talked about it. Buddha has talked about it. Ramana, even I think I do believe, mentioned it or talked about it. Of course, it's neglected a little bit. And uh, Rumi has talked about this kind of thing. You prepare the temple, maybe grace will arrive. Maybe, maybe not. But it will certainly change things by attending to the temple. And so I want to go back to just what you said before. Is that the light that we're talking about? You talked about the light, yeah, of accept of embracing the light. What is the light? The light in the food, you said. Is it light? Is it light? Is it you, know, you wanted to avoid heavy foods instinctively? You had an instinct for it. Most of us don't have that instinct. We have to try and remember it. But you had it. I I think that light can be experienced again on many levels just as we have many energy bodies the physical the emotional the mental the astral the etheric the yeah the subtle the not so subtle yeah we the can chakra, also chakra system, yeah course, well that's yeah. what it is yes yeah but right. we can also experience the light on many levels so we can talk of the light of beingness which is essentially uh, another way of saying that is the emptiness of open awareness. Open awareness without being limited, without a boundary. The boundary comes through form, <laughs> yeah? But without form, it has no boundary. Boundary is the, is the infinite boundless beingness that is one beingness where that we can realize, yeah, or as part of the awakening. Um, we can call that light. Why is it light? Because it's not occluded by thought. It's not occluded by perception. It's not occluded by any form that arises. Yeah, we, we can have that, that. We can have that experience, if you like, in deep meditation and deep silence and also in awakening it's part of that experience and not not just that but it's part of it so that's light on one level it's not physically seeing light it's simply the permeability the invisibility of awareness itself open awareness the primordial ground of being yeah. prior to perception prior to to any appearance that takes place yeah. as that light if you like includes form because form appears in that in the formless then thoughts appear 
feelings appear. Energy, energetic experiences, sensation. Yeah, and then we can get into physical sensation. We can feel energy moving. Yeah, the things we touch, the things we taste. Of course, as it gets more dense, then it becomes uh, beliefs, patterns, tendencies, and so on. Light can be experienced through all of that. Yeah, so if it's touch, then there's a lightness of touch. We're sensitive to that. If it's taste, we can taste the light. But, but yeah, in, in the way that kind of described earlier, there's a lightness to the taste. There's an alive, it's, it, it's indescribable. We're either in, in touch with it or we're not in touch with it. I can tell you that if I, if I ate a, uh, <laughs> if I tasted a bag of, Doritos <laughs> that would not taste like light to me. <laughs> yeah, there's a heaviness, there's an intensity, there's a, there's a, yeah, whatever it might be. I, I'm just taking any old example here, but that sorry, can... Doritos. <laughs> yes, yeah, <sorry>. I'm <laughs> just thinking of something heavily flavored or processed. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so we 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 can experience the light if I'm experiencing a thought, an emotion. I know what light is. Yeah. A heavy emotion will have a strong sense of me and fear and trepidation and it gets stuck or it's suppressed and it's lurking around. Yeah, so we, we have a sensitivity to light on many different levels. And and that and that's uh in and it that's a, a, not a blanket kind of not a one size fits all that 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 is an individuation isn't it that's something that comes through the individuation your sensitivity is your sensitivity mine is mine they're very different in some ways aren't they well for the very fact that we each have a different physiological organism with its own yeah. particular neural wiring and uh, history and digestion and elimination process and all of that and our own life experience then then yes it may have yes. a different quality but everyone has that inner navigation that's the important part the inner navigation is the sensitivity I think it's just that it's important for people to know that it's not a it's not a one size fits all. One has to uh, listen deeply and attend to, or allow, or, or become sensitive to in the way that you're talking about. This is as much not about um, it's it's about developing that kind of uh, a new relationship, really, in many ways, isn't it? Well, absolutely. That's why it's not about protocols. If there was a protocol that would fit everybody, <laughs> you eat this, you do this, you, yeah, then... Then bingo. <laughs> then that would be a linear cause of something. But it's not, as you just said. It, that's why we don't, I don't ever... I do. ...provide a protocol to anyone. The, oh. the most that we can say is... cleansing of some sort the release of toxic emotion the release of toxic what has become toxic uh cellular material yes. in whatever way moves you yeah I mean, everyone has to find their own protocol obviously there are some fundamentals that that are, 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 are valuable or effective um and the same with with the relationship to food i would say slow down and be very conscious as you eat. Yeah, you can eat anything, but slow down and you'll develop a sensitivity. Chew it, feel it. Yeah, be intimate with what you're eating and you'll feel what it is. And mostly food is invested with emotion. Mm -hmm. And what we're eating is emotion, <laughs> emotional energy. Yeah. And if we slow down, I know because this happened for me as well. I would I would eat in my younger days um, emotionally, 
when I was lonely, when I was upset, when I was suppressing anger and so on. And, you know, you kind of just shovel it in, <laughs> um, whether it's good food, bad food, whatever, you know. And when I finally slowed down, I don't know how that happened, but maybe over a period of time and, and started to really feel what I was eating, then I felt my emotions. Yes, that's right. Correct. And then food became a whole different relationship. I wasn't eating for emotional reasons, to stuff things down, to find comfort, and usually because there was some sort of sense of loneliness or abandonment. And now it's very light. It's almost like the body, the, fun the, the organism knows how much to eat, when to eat. It doesn't overeat. It doesn't indulge. Mm -hmm. Neither does it, is it punitive. It's not controlling. It's just very natural. And actually, it doesn't need very much. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to say in that, <laughs> but we're not, we're not going to unpack in, in, in this meeting. I mean, in this podcast, because of the fact, in the, you know, actually, it's a vortex that opens up. It's not, there's nothing, no problem with it, but it is because you've, you, you notice at a certain point, and after this long journey of mine, uh, uh, to, to, to notice that, we 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 want food in a way our relationship to food to so often be the problem but food is often such a veil to the emotionality behind the motives that for the food that it, it quickly we get to what's what's going i've worked with people you know and quickly we get to the beliefs that are wrapped around the emotions that are wrapped around this food kind of behavior and that in itself is a worthy is a is a worthy investigation investigation because and and now what I we've got a little bit of time and I just want to talk to, about the next bit, which is then does awakening self realization have a direct impact on the body, and what I'm trying to uh, get to is I'll go back to the light, without you know being too wishy washy about it, the purification. That can awakening, excuse me, the realization, does that actually have an impact? Or or, or back to the original point, is, are they are they related? Can it be the, the the cause of a purification process that's going on? I'd love to say yes to that, but I don't think it's the case. I don't think awakening has a direct impact on the body. It may have an impact on your relationship to your inner navigation system. It may do, but I don't think it has a direct impact on the body. So we go back to the same thing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Awakening Ultimately. is awakening. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Absolutely. Unless you actually attend to the body in the present. And it may be a backlog of the past, then nothing will actually change because it's become dense on that point. At that point, if it hasn't been addressed, then it has to be addressed. And it can only be addressed on the same level that the problem has been created emotionally, uh, physically, uh, digestively, <laughs> cellularly, whatever it is, ten, you know, muscularly, it, that has to be addressed. So there can be awakening, but nothing changes on the on the physical level. It doesn't suddenly make you in perfect health. It doesn't make you so you know suddenly have lots of energy and, and so on and so on. It doesn't change the function of the body. You have to address the function of the body. And when we say body, all those energy systems, you have to address that directly. So either that addressing of the many energy bodies takes place prior to awakening. And so that's the emptying of the vessel that prepares the way just because it's part of your life's journey as it was mine. So that when awakening took place, it became abiding. There wasn't anything obstructing it. Okay. Yeah. So, so, yeah? so yes, <laughs> I, I, I understand that completely. So, while anybody is waiting for awakening to happen, unless if some awakening has happened, then 
who cares you know the choice is entirely a, 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 up to one's individuation whether that's from will or not will it doesn't really matter because a realization is the realization but in the meantime clean the vessel yes yes is this a, a contemporary we'll finish up in a minute is this a contemporary conversation is it meaning meaning you know as this has come over from the from 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 the east where maybe they're you know more steeped in ayurveda or or maybe not or you know i don't really know um but over here the conversation now for the last 15 years in the non-dual in the, all of the spiritual circuits you know has been about what is consciousness and what is consciousness and i know your book which was five six years ago or more you know spoke a bit to the to the embodiment and the embodiment being what's the relationship here what's the relationship between enlightenment or awakening and the body and it wasn't really discussed very much because obviously people want to know well you know what is this enlightened state what is this is this, this 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 space and now after you know there's we work quickly in the west we don't need a thousand years it's like well hold on a minute what's the relationship of this to to trauma people are talking about trauma very much in relationship to awakening and so here comes the body here comes the body. I think this... I think it is a contemporary conversation, um, because it is kind of almost two two extremes in 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 the West. Well, even in the East, where mm. there can be so much attention on the on the practice, the physical practice, whether it's yoga practice or um, <laughs> Kundalini. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, well, it's very much the practice. Ascetic, the ascetic yeah, practices. so as yeah. if that's the way to God, which which there is an element of truth in that. But then again, yeah, we, we, we've touched on that. It becomes a higher consciousness thing and an attachment to the practice, and it's the cause of enlightenment, and, and that's not actually true. Um, so there's an over-attachment with, with the practice uh, sometimes body based, uh, you know, if I, you know, it becomes another spiritual identity and so on. And then there's the other extreme in, in the contemporary world, which is the non dual that seems to have penetrated many, much of spirituality, which is the body doesn't matter and, uh, you know, only consciousness is real. And then we have the whole bypassing thing. So the conversation needs to bring the two together, not about practice, but this holistic understanding that form is formlessness. Yeah, it arises. At, it's one. It's all one. Yeah. So to bring some intelligent conversation to it so that it, it can activate that inner intelligence, that inner navigation. Yeah. So it's not just swinging from one extreme well, to, other, to yeah. the other. Yeah. And I, I think body. that's also true in 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 Eastern yes. you know, traditions. You, you you do have, you know, the very practice-based uh uh traditions and and then you have the very you know, Advaita, Advaitic, yeah? And somewhere somewhere along the line, it's the two. I, I would say it's more, uh, if we're going to give it a name, it's, it's sort of a blend of a marriage mm. of Advaita and Tantra, mm. yeah? The two coming together, yeah? The realization of true nature and the inclusion of everything in that, everything. Mm. Mm. which is what I call the embodiment of enlightenment. Mm. I agree. I think that, yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful conversation to have here in the West because it, you know, unlike in a way in the East, which has a, a history of, I don't know, you know, before, maybe more nat naturalness in historically, you know, whereas over in the West we've been chemicalized to such a point that the body it's 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 more convenient to exclude the body from the spiritual conversation because the body is a problem. Body is a big problem to the to the, it's an inconvenient fact that we would rather dismiss in a lot of spiritual conversations. 
and and rightly so in a way because the body in the west is a problem we don't know what to do about it we've completely neglected it and then we go about fixing it and this is this is an alternative way of relating to it that actually brings the possibility of it back into a, a harmonic mm. that you're yes. talking about uh, uh, it, it, yeah yeah i think i think maybe the 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 primary point which is sort of coming through our, our conversation is that the body's not a separate entity yes yes it's yes. not actually a thing it's not a thing. Yeah, and then your mind's another thing and your emotions are another thing. Thank you. Because then the body becomes a problem. Thank you, yes. Or, or something, yeah? It, it, it's all one. It's all one. It's all a, a different expression, a different appearance of the same. So all of it must be included, not the body as a thing. Yeah, again, we, we, we come across many people who talk about the body as if it was a problem that needs to be fixed. I've got this tension in my body. How am I going to? I've got this trauma in my body. The trauma is not in your body. It's in your energy system. And that energy system has many levels, mind, emotion, body, energy. It's all the same. So the body's not a thing outside of you. It's an appearance within consciousness. So we need to look at the the essence of that consciousness, get to the root of it, and then it'll get addressed on all levels. It's holistic. Exactly. Form and formless are one. It's not just that they're interconnected. They're actually one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the whole. It's a whole. It's a whole thing. So... It, maybe that's a good place to to mm. for us to end. I read yes. a poem at, uh, at at something. This this is a a beautiful conversation that I do like to have, and I did an event recently, and I my my introduction was a poem. When we talk about the body, we talk about it as though it's a thing, like everything else we talk about, a solid object, but it's not. It's part of a great energy system we call me. It is already a union, but we are not. We are mind heavy, emotionally weighed down and often compromised by toxins. And when something goes wrong, we want it fixed. But the fixer does not always show up. So then what? <laughs> so then that leads to this exploration. Can we bring the, 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 the notion of the body, the idea of the body, not even the body itself, we don't need to fix the body. We need to fix our idea about the body. And then something new starts to happen. This creates space, creates light, allows the light. And then the light does the work. We think we have to do the work. We don't have to do the work. Mm. Good. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Ramoda. I would actually encourage anybody who's interested a little bit more to go and dig out that book. It's on Amazon. Um, embodied enlightenment chapter i can't remember the body is a gateway mm -hmm. to something or other and i can't remember what but i would recommend that 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 uh that chapter because it really is quite you know a quite beautiful chapter because you've always you know you you you, you pointed the way for me for many years during a, a huge transition and transformation that i had to go through from the darkness of major illness into the light of 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 loving harmony and i remember this and i remember i'm very grateful to you for holding that without even realizing you were holding the light but actually to, for, for holding that for me and uh so thank you very much good thank you okay everybody thank you so much for listening we'll be back soon uh don't forget to subscribe wherever you are uh, share the video share the podcast if you feel moved to and we will see you again very soon be well be blessed and don't forget the body <laughs> namaste namaste